Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the fifth edition of CD Live. Uh, again, joined by my co-host, Larry Hansen, Conference Direct's Chief Marketing Officer. My name is Adam Briggs. I'm the Senior Vice President of Operations with Conference Direct. And we're joined by a long-term friend of Conference Direct's, uh, Steve Enselein, who's the Senior Vice President of Events from Hyatt Hotels. Steve, thanks for joining us. Hi, guys. How are you? Great to see you both today. You're Absolutely. welcome. Uh, so thanks again. I know that you're busy with your own uh, kickoff meetings, getting ready for the return of in-person events. Uh, we're certainly seeing a huge uptick in that, which is really exciting. As much as we love virtual, um, getting back to heads and beds is, is really where we all got our start. So we're excited to the return to in-person meetings. But I think everyone agrees hybrid is, is going to be that bridge, that transition and, and the future. So can you tell us a little bit about what Hyatt has planned for hybrid meetings as hybrid meetings as we return? Sure, I'd love to, Adam. Thanks for asking. Um, we are really looking at hybrid in three different phases, and we're starting to see phase one right now, where small events are starting to want to connect. Uh, a group of six, eight, ten people in Chicago connecting with a group of six, eight, ten people in Florida and California. So we think that's phase one, and we, we are starting to see that happen right now. Phase two is when I, uh, the vaccine gets more widely distributed in the later part of this year, where events that are on the books right now come back to life, and they may be smaller than anticipated, and they're going to want to send out um, the content in a hybrid way so people who can attend the event can join us. And then we think the third phase will be probably in the beginning of next year as people start to look at hybrid as a way to grow their event, to make it larger than it would have been. And they're starting to see, you know, attendance come back to close to what it was um, pre-COVID and expanding the reach to more people that might be able to have, you know, enough time or money to attend the entire event. Great. And, you know, Steve, um, Operationally, there does need to be some changes to operate hybrid events at hotel. Can you talk to us a little bit about what um, Hyatt's doing to support that? Sure. It, it started right away with um, making sure that we had the necessary bandwidth in our hotels to um, be able to execute it. And again, you know, we have a wide portfolio of hotels with lots of different types of meeting spaces. So uh, our first focus was really on our regencies and grands to make sure that the, the bandwidth to, to operate hybrid meetings was available. And we did a, a survey to make sure that all of the hotels had it. Um, the second thing that we've really started to focus on is making sure our teams are educated, um, you know, to make sure that the salespeople have the basic knowledge and that our event planning people have the, the basic knowledge. We worked very closely with our partners at Encore to make sure that you know all the training materials they have are available to our teams, and um, we continue to do that. Um, as we started to see these small meetings operationally, we've we've changed some of the equipment that we have in the hotels. So I mentioned you know phase one where these small meetings are coming back. We've introduced um, a new piece of equipment in our our inventory called an owl. Uh, it's a, a little device that'll sit in the center of a conference table. It's got four cameras built in it, four omnidirectional microphones, and it allows you to have the meeting um, live and send the signal out to other locations. And as I talk, it you know the camera focuses on me and it picks up my voice. And then Larry, if you started to talk, you know, and in just a second or two, it would slide over to you and start to um, pick up your image and, and your voice. So operationally, that's a change we've made. The newest thing that we've done operationally is we've started to think about that next phase where we're starting to broadcast from a larger room and that you might need to have broadcasts from a breakout room. We partnered with our friends at Encore to really um, take a look at each of those meetings, what the uh, organization is trying to accomplish, and to clearly talk about the equipment that you would need in each one of those rooms and what that cost would be. So it's really designed to help those groups that are starting to think about it now, understand what the cost implications are and what they have to think about as they move forward with these events. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, Encore is a great um, partner or two of ours, and we've worked with them a lot. But what is Hyatt's stance on bringing in other production partners or Internet providers to help out on events? Yeah, I same as it's always been. Um, we've always allowed, you know, companies to bring in different production companies, different audiovisual companies, if they wanted to. 
Um, we think that there are certain things that we should continue to, to manage. And we believe that, you know, our internet is probably the way you want to go as opposed to bringing in an outside company. But we're absolutely open to other companies uh, bringing in their, their partners and vendors. I've spent a lot of time over the you know last six months talking to customers about hybrid and what they're thinking. And my belief is probably 50% of the organizations have a partner or vendor that they're really comfortable with, that they've worked with, and they're going to bring them into our building. And our goal is to have the resources available to make us really easy to work with when that outside company comes in. Great. Excellent. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, you kind of highlighted that a little bit in your last uh, response in terms of the vaccine and the different sizes of events that are coming back. Are you starting to pick up any trends? Um, and I know it's going to vary by event size, but what does the booking window look like? Are are people you know pushing out? Have they stopped that, or are you know what does what does twenty one look like? And is twenty two, you know, kind of back to normal? What are your thoughts there? Well, happy to report that we've seen a real nice uptick in inquiries and leads um, over the last month. Um, you know, we've been tracking our lead volumes since you know the pandemic started, and happy to report that it, you know over this last month our, our inquiry base is up about thirty five percent. So we're hoping that that trend continues, and I think that there's a level of optimism out there. Um, it, it'll be really nice to you know get the vaccine program moving quickly. I think all of us want to you know see you know getting to two hundred million people with the vaccination. I think that's going to be you know a really positive thing. So if that keeps moving forward, we think we're going to be um, seeing events come back in. Q3 and Q4 with hopefully 22 being pretty strong for us. I'm guessing you're probably seeing the same thing, Adam, huh? Yeah. On the housing side, you know, we didn't have any interest from customers in Q4 of last year, but we've started to see our, you know, legacy customers returning and, and talking about opening housing. So it is really exciting. We're reinvesting in that group as well, just to make sure that we're ready in advance of, of the return of demand. So you mentioned, you know, returning to events Q3, Q4, how's Hyde approaching Q2? I mean, obviously I'm assuming you have contracts on the books. Are you working with your customers to, you know, social distance programs, pushing dates? How are you handling uh, Q2 programs? Yeah, I'll, I'll take it in two directions. So operationally, of course, we're still following all of the protocols that we put into play right away with, you know, the, the requirements for social distancing, the modifications we've made to our food and beverage programming, um, all of the new contactless services that we put into play um, inside of our hotels that, you know, allow people to, to feel safe and secure. Um, as it relates to business, um, we're going to continue what we've been doing since the pandemic, you know, started. Uh, I think, you know, we've been very flexible and worked with customers to, you know, lift and shift their programs to different dates and to, you know, really make the right decisions as it relates to cancellation. Uh, we're about to introduce a new group offer for small meetings that will have a simplified contract, no attrition, no cancellation. Um, and we're going to work with our groups to make sure we do the right thing uh, as we move forward. Steve, Steve, you mentioned food and beverage, which, you know, for groups is going to be really important going forward to do it one safely, but creatively too. How are you guys approaching food and beverage um, during COVID and the pandemic? Yeah, we've um, had so many great learnings um, over the last six months when we we started to reopen the hotels, um, you know, our, our complete focus was on safety and, and we thought that we were going to end up having to do, you know, a lot of packaged items, but uh, we quickly learned that there are a lot of things that we can do to make sure that it's safe. Um, you know, we've obviously instituted the, the plexiglass shields on the buffets, um, you know, having servers there to help, you know, the guests put the foods that they want on their places, on their plates. Um, our chefs, I couldn't be more proud of the, the creativity and um, resourcefulness that they've shown and how they're repurposing equipment in our hotels to um, have individual portions, but still have them be very attractive. Um, we've been beta testing and experimenting with a, a program in about 10 of our hotels right now to allow guests to order their meals um, at banquet. We've got a, a system that would allow the individuals to use a QR code, identify which of the meal items they'd like to have, um, check that box in, uh, we have the food all set out for them, all packaged and ready for that guest to, to enjoy when they get it. But um, we've had great um, success, great feedback, and I can't wait to welcome your guests back into our hotels to show that, you know, just because we're, we're super focused on, on safety doesn't mean that creativity and quality has gone out the window. I love the QR code. I mean, obviously, 
uh, customers, one of the things they're going to be really concerned is, do you in, anticipate any um, financial impacts on changes for customers on pricing or anything, or it should be fairly stable? I, I think it's going to be stable. You know, we, we told our hotels early on, we, we spent a lot of time uh, put together a task force of chefs, food and beverage directors and directors of events to give our hotels ideas on how to approach banquet food and beverage. And one of the things that we said to them right away, we're not passing any of the costs along at this point right now. So I think as you work on your budgets um, moving forward, you can expect pricing to remain consistent. Right. Steve, you've, you've talked a lot over the course of you know, the last 10 minutes or so about the lessons learned and, and things that you're implementing. Obviously, uh, personnel, uh, you know, that has to trickle down. How has Hyde approached training your frontline workers and, and other staff on these new initiatives and, and getting, getting them to think on the front lines about how to get that back to business safely? Sure. Um, a lot of time went into um, creating our global care and cleanliness uh, commitment, which is our, our promise to the planners and to our guests as to what you can expect in our hotels. Uh, we partnered with a number of organizations. We partnered with Cleveland Clinic, with Ecolab, um, a number of, of, of specialists in, in uh, cleanliness, uh, GBAC specifically, the Global Bio Risk uh, Advisory Council. And we put together what our protocols would be. And we looked at everything, Adam, from you know how we clean guest rooms to how we clean public areas to how we serve food and beverage. And with GBAC's help, we put together a, a certification program and all of our hotels, I'm happy to say now, have been GBAC certified to make sure that that safety and, and, and cleanliness is there. As part of that program, we introduced a hygiene manager at every one of our hotels. That hygiene manager has been certified and their job is to make sure that as new colleague or colleagues come back, that they go through this orientation about what the new procedures, what the new policies are and what the expectations are. We have training videos. Um, we have videos that the planners can look at to see what you know the new protocols are and what our expectations are. And I'm really excited to, to report now that as we start to think about staffing and as we're seeing these um, inquiries start to increase, we're starting to think about how we're gonna bring back our event planning teams and our sales teams to make sure that we're well positioned to handle demand when it starts to come back in. We've been working with our, our analytics team to help us with um, you know, lead volume and educating our, our leaders on how and when to bring those people back at the right times. That's, that's key. I was just gonna ask you, Steve, about that. So. You know, because obviously, you know, the, our industry has been severely impacted with a lot of um, furloughs, terminations. But, you know, it, one of the things we've heard from our planners is it is challenging sometimes to reach someone at a hotel. And, and CS is such a critical role. So it's exciting to hear that you're bringing them back on to um, help with that, because that's going to be very important, as you know. Yes, that, that's my session today, as, as you mentioned, you know, we have our <laughs> big start meeting. So today my presentation is on how do we staff and how do we use data and soft considerations to make sure we have the right people in the right place at the right time. So so we can give out your email to any people looking for um, positions, right, Steve? With uh, this? I'm, I'm, happy, to, I'm happy, happy to talk to talent all the time. There you go. <laughs> Good. Um, so... You know, the other thing that comes into play, obviously, with hybrid is cost, um, you know, and and most unfortunately, our, our customers, their budgets are flat or actually probably less than they have been in the past because of attendance. What are you doing to kind of help customers control costs for um, hybrid events? Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing that we've done at this point right now is tried to get to a point where we can accurately indicate what the, the costs are going to be. No one really has a clear understanding yet. And we think that in our partnership with Encore, if we can really lay out what those expectations are early in the process, that the, the organizations can allocate the right amount of money to it moving forward. Um, I think our stance on holding our food and beverage pricing is another thing that we're doing to try and help with that also, Larry. Yep, great. Well, we appreciate, Steve, um, you taking the time today. This is some great insight. And for all of our Friends and partners who are listening to CD Live, this is always on our YouTube page and on our Conference Direct website. But thank you again, Steve, for taking the time to speak to us, and we appreciate Hyatt as a partner. Feelings mutual. Thanks for having me on today, you guys. Stay well, okay? Thank All you, right, Steve. You too. Have a great session. Take care, y'all. Thanks. Great.